Welcome to Africa channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to help us. We've set what's up, Doc? To our long-term 2022 Rivi and our 1T launch edition for the last time. In the end, we kept him around an extra two months beyond our usual 12-month test so we could finish out a slate of special tests including towing, hauling, running out of battery, and charging by towing. Nearly 27,600 miles later, we finally let Rivian take Doc home, albeit reluctantly. Doc, if you've forgotten, is a launch edition truck with decidedly non-launch edition wheels, making him a bit of a factory freak and possibly a future collector's item. That meant he came painted launch green, fitted with the large 135 kilowatt hour battery pack, 133 usable, and the 835 horsepower and 908 pound to foot quad motor drivetrain. It also meant those wheels were a no cost option. We then specced him with the then optional adventure trim, added the off-road upgrade, now called the all-terrain upgrade, and popped for the optional full-size spare tire, now part of the all-terrain upgrade. All told, Doc was $76,875 as built, though his order went through right before the big price change. Today, a similar but not identical truck would cost $93,600. It may not have been cheap up front, but our R1T has been cheap to run. We spent a grand total of $4,916.11 on charging at home, in public, and at work over 14 months and 27,591 miles. That works out to an average cost of just 18 cents per mile. Our long-term Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, by way of comparison, is a hybrid with similar towing and hauling capability but substantially less power and has cost us $4,217.79 in gas over 6 months and just 12,381 miles, which works out to $0.34 cents per mile. The Tundra only cost about $4,900 less than the R1T, so we made up the difference in fuel savings well before the Rivian's time with us ended. At today's price of $93,600, it would take about two and a half years to make up the difference. Our long-term 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat, one of the R1T's few rivals at the moment, has currently cost us $3,513.74 over the 10 months and nearly 16,500 miles we've had it, or 21 cents per mile. Our R1T has also been cheap to maintain, though mostly because Rivian repeatedly refused to charge us for repairs, and the company owns and operates all the service centers, so we couldn't go around them. In all, we spent $1,378.06 on maintenance, all of which went to a replacement set of tires, the one job we could do without involving Rivian. Other work including greasing a noisy wheel bearing and redoing the alignment, reattaching a loose bit of window trim, replacing the wheel well liner that was damaged in a tire blowout, and fixing the underbody paneling we broke off-roading, the two 12-volt batteries we accidentally killed while intentionally running the truck out of battery, and the charge port locking mechanism we broke trying to charge the truck after running out of battery, all covered as goodwill gestures that Rivian insists would have been covered under warranty for anyone else. It at least gave us an estimate on the dent pulled out below the passenger taillight after someone backed into the truck in a parking lot, $3,000. The truck also had two recalls issued during our loan. We're lucky enough to have a Rivian service center less than a mile from our office, so getting them inspected and signed off, no repairs needed, was a breeze. When it came to actual service calls, time in the service center schedule always seemed to magically appear for us, but we understand this has not been the experience for many owners. Read between the lines, and you'll see we had a lot of fun with Doc. The R1T's off-road ability had us taking it out to our local off-highway vehicle, OHV, areas on the regular. It easily climbed up trails that are typically the purview of Wranglers and Broncos thanks to its individual will control afforded by the four motors and the ride height afforded by the air suspension. Being able to air down the tires and then refill them from the standard onboard air compressor at the end of the day made hitting the trail as easy as going for a Sunday drive. The drive to and from the trailhead was equally fun, thanks again to the air suspension and its ability to drop the truck on the ground and the four motors ability to provide constant precise torque vectoring. Add in the hydraulically linked shock absorbers that counteract roll in real time, and the truck is as much a delight to drive on a canyon road as it is when the pavement ends. All those things also made it great to drive when we were doing truck stuff. Hauling a bed full of gravel or mulch for a yard project was a breeze, thanks to 908 pounds to foot of instantaneous torque and 835 horsepower. The air suspension kept the truck level while the hydraulics kept it handling the same as when it was empty. It was the same when we used the truck to tow everything from utility trailers to track cars. The motors just don't care about the extra weight, and the suspension has no trouble keeping the trailer in line. The integrated trailer brake worked flawlessly, giving us no reason to miss the one-size-fits-all modules found in other trucks. 
As with combustion-powered trucks, towing puts a major dent in driving range, only it's made worse by the state of our public charging infrastructure, unreliable, undersized, and almost never built with towing in mind, and the fact charging is slower than gassing up. Our tests found towing pretty much cuts the range in half, from an EPA-estimated 314 miles in ideal conditions on the right tires down to around 150 miles or less with a trailer. Part of that was our choice of tires. Knobby all-terrains don't get the same kind of mileage as a dedicated street tire, and it's a compromise we made knowingly and willingly. The EPA rates the R1T with all-terrain tires at 289 miles of range while Rivian itself now predicts 274 miles, though when we got the truck, both still had it rated at 314 miles in all configurations. This no doubt reflected heavily in the R1T's 228-mile Mount Road trip range, which measures how far you can go driving only on the freeway, where EVs are least efficient. That said, there are ways to drive more efficiently. One editor took the truck 290 miles between charges on a road trip. Plugged into the rare fully functional DC fast charger, we saw a peak charging rate of 218 kilowatts, just shy of Rivian's official rating of 220 kilowatts. During our official, regimented charging test, we saw a peak of 211 kilowatts, which delivered a 5 to 80 percent battery fill in 46 minutes. Although the battery can charge quickly when it's low, charging speed quickly tapers off as the battery fills, extending the process. Not that bad chargers and moderately slow charging times were enough to put us off road trips. Doc routinely made 800 plus mile trips to Northern California, Northern Nevada, and Southern Arizona along with shorter road trips to Central California racetracks, the Central Coast wine region, and all over the Southern California mountains and deserts. More often than not on road trips, we found ourselves needing a stop to stretch, use the restroom, and resupply snacks and drinks right around the same time the truck needed to charge, roughly every three to four hours. Taking a load off our mind on these drives was the onboard navigation system and route planner. As good as Google and Apple Maps are, and as much as we missed CarPlay and Android Auto, which are not available on Rivians, the built-in system worked well enough and continually improved with over-the-air OTA software updates. Fact is, Google and Apple don't yet know what your current range is or what your average consumption has been on the drive so far, making them far less useful for planning charging stops. Rivian software not only knows all that, but it will also reroute you to different chargers on the fly if conditions change. It takes a huge amount of work out of planning an EV road trip. The nav system is far from the only thing that improved during our time with the truck. We got 16 software updates uploaded wirelessly and installed at our convenience, usually in the middle of the night, covering everything from new features to basic bug fixes. Among the tally were two new drive modes, sand and snow, a pet mode that maintains a comfortable interior temperature while you're in a store, the ability to open every door, hood, and gate on the truck and close the powered ones from the phone app, the ability to control the climate including seat heaters and coolers from the phone app, the ability to route plan from the phone app and send it to the truck ahead of time, the ability to turn the forward-facing camera into a dash cam, the ability to control your garage doors from the infotainment screen, a car wash mode, and a camp mode that can level the suspension on uneven ground, turn off all exterior lights, and turn off all vehicle functions except door locks and power outlets to save energy. Other meaningful improvements included increased charging speeds, an extra 14 miles of range, improvements to the frustrating keyless entry system, improvements to the ride height control, numerous bug fixes, and a fun but temporary Halloween mode that turned things spooky. All that techno wizardry was just making a great truck better. The R1T doesn't just handle an off road well, it's also a comfortable daily driver. It rides better than any other pickup on the market and is far quieter inside than anything but a Ford F150 Lightning. All the lockable, hideable storage under the hood, under the rear seat, in the gear tunnel, and under the powered metal tonneau cover in the bed was deeply appreciated and in constant use. The multiple household outlets with real power behind them came in handy everywhere from the driveway to the job site to the campsite. Since we're not in the trades, the 4.5-foot bed was big enough for our uses, be it hauling a load of decomposed granite or packing for a camping trip in the mountains. Not having to pack a Bluetooth speaker or flashlight because the truck came with both was a nice bonus. That to no cover, much as we like it in concept, was one of the few big sticking points we had with the truck. Ours was still working by the time we returned the truck, but only if we helped it along with a meaningful push or pull. Rivian's been promising a fix for months, but it still wasn't available at the time of this writing. 
Other dislikes included the lack of a physical sunshade for the massive glass roof, how easily the tailgate hinge cover gets clogged with debris, preventing it from closing, dust intrusion in the gear tunnel, the deadlift required to get the full-size spare out of its cubby under the bed, even if just to pull the drain plug and release water that might have gotten in there, and the generally poor functionality of both the key fob and the phone as key feature, both of which improved noticeably via OTA updates but still had issues. We thought we'd be more upset with the near total lack of physical controls, but it didn't end up being an issue, thanks to an intuitive user interface. Those annoyances didn't put us off the truck at all. Yes, we had some tests to finish before returning the truck that extended its stay, but honestly, we also just didn't want to let it go. Many vehicles pass through our long-term fleet, and it's not often we get one we're really going to miss when it's gone. Doc's one of those vehicles. We have come to the end of the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to help us.